Hi, I'm Blake Bowles. I'm from California. I'm the founder of Unschool Adventures and the author of College Without High School, Better Than College, and The Art of Self-Directed Learning. And I also have a podcast called Off Trail Learning. I got into self-directed education in college. I was studying science. I thought I would become a scientist. I read some great books. I thought I should dedicate my life to helping kids have less of a bad time in school. And then I ended up getting into outdoor education and then got inspired to start a trip leading company called Unschool Adventures. And that's what I've done for about 12 years now. And along the way, I've written books about what I've learned from the unschoolers and alternative schoolers who I have met and worked with. And I've also worked in that practice school camp and done a few other things, but that's the short story. Okay. Is there any of these things that you want to talk more about, like either Unschool Adventures or the books or anything that you feel like, excited to share more about? I talk for a moment about Unschool Adventures. Okay. Yeah. I, over the past few years, have been uh, less and less enthusiastic like I was at the beginning of Unschool Adventures to plan new trips and to lead new trips. And so I'm kind of like it's my natural time to transition away from that. But what I'm going to transition into, I'm not quite sure yet. So I'm at an interesting moment right now. Uh, there's actually a trip happening right now. It's, it's finishing this week, a New Zealand trip. And I am not there because I'm here. <laughs> and, and so this is the first international trip that has happened without me on it. Wow. And that feels good. And also it's not something I plan on doing more of because it's also very nerve-wracking. I have a bunch of teenagers in other people's care, but ultimately my responsibility yeah. I, I don't think I'm cut out for this kind of business ownership. Like, I need to have my, my fingers in the honey mm. <laughs> What is the essence, kind of, of the Unschool Adventure? So someone who doesn't know them, how is it connected to self-directed education? So, when I was working with not-back-to-school teenagers, uh, sorry, not-back-to-school camp teenagers, they were coming from all over North America, and oftentimes, oftentimes the socialization challenge for homeschoolers and unschoolers is very real. And like lifelong unschooling families might kind of dismiss it because their kid has figured out how to have a successful community. But for lots of families getting into it, and lots of teenagers especially, like the threat is real. And so not back to school camp was this magical place where these far flung teenagers would come for just one or two weeks out of the year and they would form really tight friendships, have this you know, they always talk about connection. Whatever connection is, they really experienced it and not back to school camp, and they continue to. Um, and so I saw how powerful it was to bring together teenage homeschoolers, unschoolers. Uh, but I wanted to do something bigger than a summer camp. Um, I didn't want to try to do something like not back to school camp because they're already doing a great job, and I enjoy just working for them. But uh, my interests were in late and long term travel. And I had a lot of formative experiences uh, doing my own personal travels. And I wanted to offer something like that. And these teenagers seemed like they would be receptive to this idea. And all I needed to do was find you know, roughly eight of them to run a trip that would break even. And that's what happened in 2008. I came up with an idea for a six-week trip to Argentina. And Grace Llewellyn, who runs Not Back to School Camp, shared one email to the whole camp community saying that Blake and his friend Abby, who also worked at camp, are offering this trip. And there was enough teenagers who were interested, both from not back to school camp and from the larger homeschooling community, that we got nine to sign up. And I ran the trip, and I got paid to travel. And I thought, this is awesome. And the teenagers thought it was really awesome, too, because it's so much bigger and so much more impactful than just one week of being away. Like when you're in a foreign country with a group of just you know about 10 other people for six weeks, it's, it's a highly transformative experience, yeah. usually. You say that you're a person who really values traveling as part of your lifestyle, so really, right? To not be in just one place, but to enjoy many places and call many places your home. Do you think that an experience like Unschool Adventures is specifically for people that share that value, or could it be for anyone, really? 
No, I think travel is a fairly universal value nowadays, especially for young people. And but still, most people want to have normal jobs, normal homes, the kind of things that I have forsaken. And so, just going on one big trip as a teenager or as a young adult, like maybe as a gap year or after you finish your formal education, I mean, just one big trip can be enough to be a highly powerful experience. And so, no, I don't think this is some sort of like cult of nomadism <laughs> that you have to be, you know, inducted into in order to and then you benefit can never from get each out trip. Of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to just be able to go to a foreign country and not go on some highly structured program where yeah. everything is laid out for you, and especially to go for a long period of time, more than a few weeks, like most people will never get the chance to do that. And so I want to offer teenagers who are motivated to travel and who have the freedom to design their schedules and to choose what they're doing with their, their time, unschoolers, yeah. I want to offer them the chance to at least do that once. Nice. So now you said that this is something you have explored in the past and you're kind of maybe moving away from it, not sure yes. what's There's ambiguity next. there. Do yes. you want to talk about the, like some of the things or is it still too unclear what's coming next? Yeah, I don't want to theorize too much, but I mean, <laughs> one thing that I've been very excited about this year is I'm, I'm almost done with another book. Okay. My fourth book, the, the working title right now is Why Are You Still Sending Your Kid to School? Okay. And it's written for parents, and I've just been so enthused about this book, and I think it's going to be it's going to be great. I know it's great. And so it's going to come out sometime in 2020, and that's something that I could see myself diving into a lot is the world of writing. I'm not sure what that would look like. I've enjoyed public speaking also, so I think I'm not going to stop writing on public speaking. But as, but I haven't made much money doing either of those either. So if I stop running trips for teenagers, how am I going to make money? That's a huge unanswered question at this point. But, but what I know is that if, it's, if I am not in it anymore, then I shouldn't keep doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want to be... I don't want to keep doing it just because it's profitable. I need to make money somehow, but I don't want to be the jaded old trip leader who's like, damn teenagers. I don't actually want to be here, but I have no idea what else I should do for work. <laughs> okay, great. So it sounds like you're, just for me to, to summarize it, it sounds like you have done something, it's been working, you don't want to keep doing it just because it's working, so you're at a point again where like figuring out, okay, here are the things that I'm good at maybe, here are the things that people have paid me to do, are those the same? Where do they overlap? What do I want to dive into more? Um, which sounds like something that lots of young people also experience when they are in the phase where maybe the normal schooling age is over and they're like, okay, what am I going to do now? Any advice for how to handle such a situation? <laughs> well, uh, I've enjoyed using this three-circle Venn diagram model for a long time which one of the circles is passion, what you love to do, one of the circles is skill, what you can do, and one of the circles is market, what people will pay you to do. Okay. And so if you're just passionate about something but you have no skills and nobody will pay you to do it, then you're just a fan. You might love soccer, but you're no good at, you're certainly not a professional <laughs> soccer player, okay. and no one's going to pay you to watch soccer, so you're just a soccer fan. Mm -hmm. That's fun. You can be skilled at something. So for example, I'm skilled at math. Like, whenever I was uh, presented with a math class or math problems, I could pick it up really quickly. But did I love doing math? I mean, I enjoyed getting the rewards that came from being told, you know, you're a good student. Yeah. But then I realized when I was in college that really serious math, like, like the hardcore stuff that actual research scientists do, uh, I didn't have love for that, mm -hmm. like, like my other classmates did. And so I could still do it, barely. That the overlap wasn't there between passion and skill. Uh, but if you do have that, then it's like a hobby, right? Mm -hmm. Because still no one is paying you for it, but you're good at it, you like to do it. So. Um, and then if you are, get paid for something and you're good at it, then you have a job, right? Because ah. you won't necessarily love what you're doing. And so you can see where this is going. You're trying to find that, that sweet spot in the middle. Three, you know. And so I've used this diagram to help teenagers think about which direction to choose, especially when they're going into the college years, considering whether they should go to college or not, what they should study there. But for myself, 
yeah, I like working uh, face to face with young people. I uh, I'm good at doing like risk management stuff. Unschooled Ventures has a perfect safety record. That's something I'm really proud of. I like connecting people. I like organizing events. So that's where my head is right now. Just when I when I turn that back on myself. Okay, great. I have one other question, which I'm not sure if it's going to be easy or difficult to to answer. It depends on. <laughs> um. So you told me a bit about how you got into the world of self driven education, what was your first intention or um, question or inquiry around it. And I'm sure that that has changed over time too, right? That there have been different questions. And I noticed that, for example, through Facebook, you sometimes channel people's questions back to the community. Like there's a person that has a specific doubt and you're like, oh, there's this specific doubt. Hey guys, what do you say about that? So I think, I guess you've been confronted with many different questions that come up around the topic. Is there any question in particular that you're exploring at the moment? Anything in the realm of separate education where like, I wonder, like, there's this thing that I'm not sure about or that I try to learn more about? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. I think, uh, so a question that comes up over and over again is the question of, of how do you help a kid develop intrinsic motivation because there's this scary thing that happens when, when families start unschooling or they decide that school regular school is not working for their kids so they're going to go to a radical alternative school like an agile learning center or a liberated learner center or a Sudbury school and all of the, the reins all of the restrictions and expectations are taken away from the kid and the story is that the kid's going to become Intrinsically motivated. That's all you have to do. Get rid of all the, the grades and the bribes and then their intrinsic motivation will flourish. And for a lot of parents, they think, my kid will just want to learn math automatically. They will, they will do things that look impressive mm -hmm. to adult society. And some kids do do that, but I think that's the minority of cases. Many more are just like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, Let's play some video games. Let's watch a bunch of YouTube videos. Let's just hang out and chill out and talk with people. Uh, sleep in a lot. And so this question of like, where does intrinsic motivation come from? And, and how can I get through that period, which is commonly known as the de-schooling period? How can I have faith that, that this intrinsic motivation will develop? And that it will look like something that is somehow socially approved uh, that will turn into a potential path to college or a potential career. This whole question about how uh, self-directed young people do make that transition into adulthood, I think it's at the root of most parents' concerns about taking an alternative path mm -hmm. for their kids, even when their kid is five years old. Because there's this whole progression from the right kindergarten to the right elementary school to the right middle school and on and on and all that pressure builds up at a very early age now. So that's a question I've been thinking a lot about and I think that for the most part the unschooling community has got the right take on it and I've been thinking about this a lot with the new book and I think that the best way to Explain how this works is to say that what you're looking for is the moment. You could even write moment with a capital M in this case, the moment. Okay. And that is the moment when uh, your kid displays some sort of self-driven interest in doing something that is a bit challenging. It doesn't matter what it is. That's the hard part, I think. Because a lot of kids, uh, they will get really deep into gaming, for example. Like they'll start playing Minecraft or Fortnite, and games, especially video games, are not easy. Like, if a game is easy, if golf did not involve, like, having to hit a tiny ball with a weird stick very far away, if you just took a golf ball and you walked over and you put it into a hole, yeah. nobody would play golf. <laughs> we play golf because it's challenging. And so I think that's the reason that video games are the first place that a lot of kids go, especially boys, uh, is because it's a very easy way to get challenged and when you finish one of these challenges in a game, then you're rewarded with the next challenge. It's a little bit harder. Yeah. 
And so what you're looking for is something like that, and maybe it's in the realm of games because they're so accessible, but maybe it's in some other realm. It could be, I don't know, crocheting. It, it could be martial arts. It could be uh, creating YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. So. And then that the moment with a capital M is when you can see or notice that this young person has developed the, this interest. Yeah, you. and as a parent, that gives you a little bit of confidence, a little bit of faith, but also you have to be very careful because it's like this little mm -hmm. sprout. Yeah. And you can very easily smother it you know, yeah. by saying, like, <laughs> let's document and measure this. Uh, you know, by saying, let's put this in your college portfolio right now. And, or saying, oh, you're interested in crocheting? Great. I've signed you up for a, an online class in advanced crocheting techniques. Yeah. Uh, it's so easy to be over-enthusiastic and ultimately controlling, I think, as a parent. Uh, which is something that self-directed learning centers do a really good job of. Like, Sudbury Model School, Agile Learning Center, North Star, these are all places where there are adults there who are very good, they're very practiced at saying like, oh cool, you're into this new thing, tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I can do to help you with this? No? And then they leave that kid alone. And sometimes it's hard for parents to do that when they're first getting into this world. So yeah. I've come to see these, these external places, these schools and learning centers as playing a really pivotal role not just logistically for families who can't homeschool or unschool because both parents work or it's a one parent family, et cetera, there's many reasons, yeah. but because of the adults who, uh, the non-parental adults who play a role in those places.